Hey guys and gals, this is Cyanic Arrow, and I'm going to do an update video on the Red Power 2 sorting machines. Uh, there's a few problems that people found and they were encountering. So first is the uh, big loop where all the items would just loop around and then uh, they get sorted in the first machine but they either loop around or they get unsorted in the next machine. So here's the fix. Uh, you have to color each uh, like the next sorting machines with a paintbrush and then set the default to go to the next sorting machine. Also have the tubes, you know, keep going along the entire length as well. Uh, that way, whatever it doesn't know will go into the next sorting machine and what it has sorted will not be able to go through because it's got a color. And same for all the other ones. There's actually five sorting machines here and you can uh, you know make as as much as you want or as much as there is color in Minecraft. And that's sort of an issue if you want more than five sorting machines. Uh, you have to figure out some other way to do it uh, some other way to, you know, uh, get more colors or use the same colors in each system. So some restriction tools will probably be required. But if you only need five, or you know, if you need uh, how many colors are there anyway? Well, let's check. Um, Where are these colors? Oh shoot, did I pass them? Paintbrushes, alright, whatever. There's paint. Sixteen, so um you could have eight sorting machines going to eight chests. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to figure out some restriction tube stuff uh, for the like around the chest area, and then you'll be able to use more sorting machines. Uh, now, a problem that I have uh, encountered recently is that the uh, retrievers or filters, they get jammed sometimes when there's too many items backflowing into it. Uh, also sorting machines, like all the machines, if there's too many items going backwards into its internal buffer, uh, it kind of jams and uh, the whole thing just stops working until you uh, clear out the jam. And that's not very uh, automated, is it? So what I've put is a buffer over here. Now uh, it kind of looks complicated because I had to put items on, oh, all right, let me show you. Here's the buffer. Each side, so there's five sides, uh, corresponds to a different column inside the buffer. So if you only have it, it's like, let's say, putting it in from this side, then we'll only fill in this column. And then the rest will be empty. So I don't, I don't want to do that. And this is obviously the output side. Uh, so I put that in. The output is facing the sorting machine and because of this I need a redstone signal to travel to the sorting machine and then uh, extract items. So I still have the regular sorting, uh, sorry, filter with chest and then I have extra um, you know red wire, red jacketed cables to connect everything to one timer. There's a retriever here and this is just to show you that you can use a retriever to retrieve items from uh, multiple uh, inventories. The problem is the retriever retrieves from the closest one first so if this let's say this mace raider which is the closest one always has uh, some sort of ingot in it sorry dust this one has dust always has some sort of dust in it and um, that would mean the retriever would only retrieve from this mace raider 
the any items going being mace rated in the second one while well, the dust will stay here until the first one has been cleared out so that is an issue when using retrievers uh, when you use filters however it does not but then again uh, you need four filters for this uh, whereas there is only one retriever for all of them now uh, Crafting a retriever requires ender pearls, so uh, you might not be able to do that right away. It's totally fine, you don't need to. Uh, this is just to show you that you can use it. Um, let's see, uh, right. So, if you have, let's say, an underground base, or it's in a mountain, and you don't want to have solar panels going everywhere around the outside, you can use a thermal pile. So this uh, block here doesn't have a, a GUI. Uh, what it does is get its uh, blue electric or blue electricity power thing from heat differences. And that's why I have lava on the bottom and then water surrounding the sides. Uh, this is what I found to be most uh, efficient. Uh, and you can see that it doesn't really require that much power to run these uh, sorting machines and filters, uh, retrievers. The filter doesn't need that power, blue, blue electric power. And uh, the only problem with this is it needs a little bit more space than solar panels. And it doesn't produce as much power, but it does run throughout the night. And um, let's see. Uh, you should. You probably shouldn't run, you know, uh, blue electric furnaces and alloy furnaces uh, with thermal piles unless you have a lot of them, because it takes a very long time to charge a battery box. I mean, this thing's been running. Like I built this thing first, and then I built the rest of this uh, setup. And the battery box is not even full. I put in two batteries into this thing, uh, two full batteries, just to get it, uh, give it a jump start. Uh, so that's probably what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to jump start it with a couple of batteries in the battery box, and then it will eventually fill out the battery box. Okay, so uh, I filled up this chest full of stuff, and then we're gonna watch it go. Alright, so here it is, because it's only going in from the, uh, you know, one side of the buffer, this is full. And obviously it's extracting it one at a time. And now that it's going into this side of the buffer, it's going in here, and then uh, it's going straight back into the sorting machine. And now they're being uh, smelted. So I should tell you these uh, these guys are running on seven overclockers, and I find that that's most efficient if there's two of them. And yeah, if there's two of them, because otherwise the retriever will just retrieve from one uh, mace raider all the time. And you don't want that to happen. It's getting dark. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so um, what I found is that it will usually clear out all the dusts and then all the ores until everything's full of ingots and then send them all uh, into the appropriate chest. So it does take a little bit longer to get your uh, ingots in. However, it won't jam, so that's a plus. Uh, I'm not sure if you can put a filter to extract from the buffer. Um, I haven't been able to get that to work, but uh, 
You guys could give it a try if you want. And basically right here, see the filter is not extracting anything from this chest because um, the buffer is full. Okay, so what's that? Copper? No, okay, so we haven't finished copper yet. There's also a setting in the configurations file to turn off the annoying ticking sounds if you don't like that. Uh, you're just gonna have to f look around the, uh, I think it's Red Power 2 folder. Don't remember that. But here you go. Uh, things are going in. Uh, some meat is going in as well. Oops, there we go cooked pork chop. So some pork chop is going in. And eventually the buffer will uh, clear itself out. So this is, like, the buffer is only required if you're finding that the system is getting jammed a lot. Uh, what you could do is instead of putting the buffer here, and you know, kind of slowing everything down because some of these things don't need to be uh, macerated or cooked. You could put the buffer uh, along this line. Just make sure you have something extracting it. Oh, look. Why is that poke shot going the opposite way? That's weird. Oh, okay, because it's going in one at a time sometimes. That's fine. <clears throat> so apparently uh, I need to work on extracting from the buffer a little bit faster. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, this is a little update on the uh, Sony machines and uh, thanks for watching please leave a comment press that like button and I'll see you guys next time